Hey everyone, welcome back to Alchemy with Zero Phase. This is Eric, and I am finally getting around to doing a how-to video on how to install Automatic 11.11 for Stable Diffusion. Okay, uh, I've held off on this. There's a lot of tutorial videos out there, but I finally figured out, you know, I really should just get one up on my channel as well. I have a lot of dedicated viewers. I want to make sure I'm treating them right. And this will hopefully uh, show you a really smooth way of getting it installed. Okay, so let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is go to the GitHub page for Automatic 11.11 for Stable Diffusion Web UI. Okay, just do a search for Automatic 11.11. It'll come up. And you're going to scroll down the page to the install section. Okay, installation and running. Okay. There are some dependencies. Um, they make some recommendations. It is recommended that you have an NVIDIA GPU or a video card. It is recommended that you have something with at least eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, VRAM on it. Uh, when I first started with Automatic 1111, um, I had a RTX 2080 video card. It had eight gigs of RAM. It worked okay. It was pretty quick. I since upgraded to an RTX 3080 Ti with 12 gigs of RAM. It definitely runs a lot quicker. So just keep that in mind. So a couple of things you're going to want to do. Uh, you need to make sure that you have, uh, we're going to come down here first. You're going to need to make sure you have Python 3.10.6 installed. Okay. A couple of things to note on the Python installation. And I did run into this when I was installing it. By default, the Python install installs it on a per profile basis, meaning it installs the installation under your profile directory. And I did run into some issues with that where the automatic 11.11 uh, setup could not find the Python installation. So when you run the installer for this, there are two options you need to pay attention to. The first one is add path to system. There'll be a checkbox for that. The second is when you go to install, you need to select custom installation and then select install for all users. This will ensure that the Python software gets installed to the proper directory that Automatic 11.11 will see. Okay, the second, you're going to want to install Git. This will allow you to uh, acquire or clone the Git repository, okay? Okay, so before we move any further, I am gonna make a point of saying that you should make sure that if you are running an NVIDIA video card, please make sure that you are on the latest, not only the latest drivers, but you're going to want to make sure you have the latest version of CUDA installed. Okay. The CUDA toolkit can be downloaded from NVIDIA. Just do a Google search for CUDA download. You'll want to make sure you're getting a 12.3 download for Windows, Linux, whatever you are deciding to do. Since this is based around Windows that I'm working on, I would download for Windows. Okay. Run and install that. The next thing you're going to want to make sure you install because some plugins utilize this is the Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. Okay, it's a free download. Download it. I think just accept the defaults. You don't have to install any extra tools. Just install the base package. Okay. Once you get those installed, at that point, you can now move forward with doing a clone of the Git repository. So to do this, what we're going to do is pick where we want to have this directory because this directory is going to store a lot of information. It's where our models are going to be stored. All the images we generate are going to be stored. So you want to pick a drive, one that should be fast. It'd be great if you could install this on a solid state drive, NVMe, M.2, or even just SATA solid state drive, and make sure it has plenty of space. Uh, I kid you not, it is so easy to rack up space when you're downloading models that are anywhere between four and seven gigabytes each. And the images themselves, when you're generating PNG files, uh, can take up a lot too, depending on their dimensions, okay? So I've actually created a directory called AI Art on my E drive. And what we're gonna do is come in here and type in, we're gonna click on the uh, location bar up at the top here. Okay, I don't know if you can see all that. Let me scoot this over just a little bit. Okay. And just a little bit more right there. Okay, so 
In here, we're going to type in the word CMD. What this is gonna do is open up a command prompt directly in that folder. It'll take you right there, okay? Once you get that command prompt, okay, open it up a little bit. And then we're, you're going to copy and paste the command they give you here on the website where it says git clone and then the, the git address of their repository, okay? So we're going to copy that. Then we're gonna come back over to the command prompt. We're gonna type, actually we don't have to type anything, we're just gonna paste that in there. You can either right click and it should just copy it in there or you can do a control V and it'll paste it in there and hit enter. This will take just a few minutes, if, if even that, no, nope. yeah, just a few seconds, honestly. And then we're done at this point with this part of it, okay? We can actually close this and we can go back to our file browser and we have a new folder here called Stable Diffusion Web UI. Okay, we're going to go into this. We're going to scroll down till we find something that says web UI dash user dot bat. This is the initialization batch file that processes the commands to download and install the rest of the software. Okay, this is a time consuming process depending on the speed of your system. I will initiate it. Oops, wrong one. Okay. It's going to start building the folder and file structure that it's going to need to run this. You see how it found my Python installation? And this is the part that can take a little while. It's downloading various models, the CUDA integration, everything. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pause this and we'll come back when it's all done. Just a quick note, do keep an eye on this and watch for any errors that come up. Usually the errors will have instructions on what you can do to uh, mitigate or resolve that error, whether it's installing a piece of software, updating something, that kind of thing. Okay, as you can see, it finished up. It went through a long list of downloads and uh, configurations, setting things up. And then finally, coming down to where it opened up the local interface and port automatically, and here we go. So this is the basic interface. From here, um, it's just a matter of downloading models because right now it has the basic 1.5 pruned EMA only model. Okay, you can go to Civit AI, which is a great place to acquire. <laughs> models. Okay. Um, there's a wide range of models for a lot of different functionality, okay? And just as a uh, quick instruction on this, they usually offer the model as a download here, and you will be downloading that model into the models directory of your new installation. So you go to models, and then under stable diffusion, and this is where you would put your models. Now, a quick uh, bit of advice, create folders, that help you categorize the type of model. So if you're downloading a 1.5 checkpoint, create a directory called 1.5. If you're downloading 2.1 models, create a directory called 2.1. And what I've done also is if you're downloading the SDXL models, create a folder called SDXL. Because what'll happen is in the interface, when you drop this menu down, it'll actually put the folder name just before the model name, okay? Uh, this will help you to categorize and filter because you can type in um, things to filter for. So you could type 1.5 and it would only show things in the 1.5 folder or SDXL. Just a great way of organizing your uh, models. A couple of more things to be familiar with. In your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, you will have a file called uh, styles.csv when you first create a style. So what that means is you come over here, click the edit button for the, uh, this is your styles menu, there's currently nothing in there, okay? When you click edit, you're gonna create a style. Um, for this one, we'll just call it style. I like to organize these as well, style. Um, cartoon-ish 
characters. Okay. And then you would type in your prompt. Cartoon style character design concept sheet. You can put a negative prompt if you want. Disfigured, comma, ugly, comma, abnormal, comma, realistic. Once you get those in there, click save. And it gives you an option to delete, but then you can close that. Okay. At which point you now have that in there and it should have created your style CSV file right there. Okay. You can edit that manually with a uh, spreadsheet editor like Excel or uh, uh, there's a bunch of open source ones, including I think even Google Sheets will edit it, um, LibreOffice, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, these Get used to these. These are great to have. I have other tutorials on how to use the tokens in it. Just a couple more things to go through. Be familiar with how settings are set up. Learn to use them. Changing different aspects will net different results. Okay. I won't go into detail on any of this right now. By default, everything that's set right now will function right out the box. Okay. The other thing you'll want to get used to and learn how to use is the extensions tab. How to enable, disable, update your extensions, as well as looking for and adding new extensions. Okay. As you get more and more used to your interface, you're going to want to do certain customizations. A lot of those customizations come from modifying the web UI user bat file. Okay. In this batch file, you will get uh, options put to put in command line arguments. Okay, right now there is none. There are a few that I use. I use the dash dash listen to allow me to access my uh, automatic 1111 remotely over a local network and even on my phone from wherever I'm at. There are a ton of other command line arguments. Those arguments can be found under the automatic 1111 stable diffusion web UI wiki. Okay. There are a lot. Okay. Um, probably would be best to ask around if you're part of any um, Discord communities, uh, what the best configuration would be for your particular PC because there are certain command line arguments that would be used to help with low VRAM uh, video cards uh, and other things that can help your, your installation run a bit quicker. Okay, I'll leave the link to this in the description. Okay, and the final thing uh, that I want to touch on is just doing a basic prompt. Okay. Here you have your positive and negative prompting. Okay. Positive prompt is what you want to see in the image. Negative prompt is what you don't want to see in the image. There's a lot of uh, negative prompts floating around. Pick your, pick your poison. It really doesn't matter. You can throw in a lot of stuff in there. Uh, I've heard arguments either way that just having something in there is better than not having anything. It depends on what you're doing. With the new SDXL models, I find myself not using negative prompts a lot more often now because they're so good at generating images. So let's just throw in a basic prompt, okay? I want to see something that's photographic. So I'm going to put in professional photography of, uh, what would we want to see? Let's say a beautiful mountain landscape with a cabin on a lake. Let's uh, say stormy skies. Evergreens. Uh, and I think that's it. Um, now let's give it some lighting effect. Uh, ambient. No, I don't want ambient. I want uh, um, golden hour lighting. And um, hazy. All right, we are using a 1.5 model, the basic one. This is probably not going to give us some good results. So we're going to uh, put a negative prompt in here, uh, ugly 
uh, distorted. Um, no lake, no cabin. I've seen people do that. It seems to work okay. Bad lighting. And we're just going to leave it at that. I want this to be uh, kind of wide, so we're going to open this up just a little bit. We're going to go to 768 and leave it at 512. Okay. And that's it. Actually, we're going to switch this over to Euler A because it'll be a little quicker. And you hit generate. Okay. This will generate a image. We're only generating one image, one bat, uh, a batch of size one with one batch. Okay, give it a second to load the model up into, into VRAM and it should pop out an image here. All right, and there we go. Sorry, I had to run, I ran into a little bit of a glitch where I had highlighted something in the terminal. I came over here and actually highlighted something like that. If you do that, it pauses the entire installation. So you just hit a key, it gets rid of it, and then it continued on. So there we go. We got kind of this drizzly looking um, cabin in a forest. There's no lake though. So what we can do, just as, again, this is just to kind of extend this tutorial a little bit. We, uh, we said cabin on a lake. What we're going to do is say cabin next to a lake. But we're going to take this word and do a control up, which will add emphasis. You can go tr hold down the control key, control up and down. We'll add emphasis, formatting. Let's generate that one more time. Okay, we got the lake. Looks like we got something that tried to be a cabin down here. So let's emphasize cabin just a little bit. Render again. And there we go. <laughs> These 1.5 models are notorious for having some kind of a watermark on here. Doesn't necessarily mean anything. Uh, it actually tries to create the watermark based on what you typed in here. So it looks like it's got a cabin there and some gibberish. It's just the images that it was trained on, a lot of them had watermarks, unfortunately. And so the AI got used to saying, hey, there should be something here. Not necessarily that there's anything specific that it's associating it with, but that there's something there that, that looks like that. So with the SDXL models and even a lot of the new, newer 2.1 models, uh, they've eliminated a lot of that, trained on better images and uh, got better results. So. so that's the basic tutorial on how to install Stable Diffusion uh, Automatic 11.11 and how to get it up and running, and how to do some basic prompting. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll talk to you all later. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in our next video.